Now, um, if you another thing that you have to know is this demineralization and this demineralization that I was talking to you about. There is a period. There is a uh, uh, term called critical pH. Okay, this critical pH uh, in the oral cavity or in the saliva has to be at one particular range below which the uh, it's an acidic environment and then it will start your demineralization. Okay, so the critical pH. Again, there are two in. Uh, there is a low fluoride, low fluoride critical pH and a high fluoride critical pH. Okay, this I think is there in your notes. If you've gone through it, you'll remember. Uh, your low fluoride critical pH is 5.5. So below which you will start getting demineralization, demineralization, sorry, because your acidic pH is less than five, around yeah, less like below seven is acidic and above seven is basic and seven is supposed to be neutral. But yeah, but if it's around 5.5 that will be your low fluoride critical pH and your high fluoride critical pH is 4.5 okay now uh, suppose you've had some acidic food or you know acidic beverage or anything the time that is uh, taken to get back into the resting pH like that time your uh, the pH should be really less so it will be really acidic so the time for the resting pH to get, I mean time for the pH to get back to the normal resting pH will be 20 minutes to 1 hour. Okay, it takes around 20 minutes to 1 hour. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah, suppose uh, you've had any acidic uh, acidic uh, beverage or food or anything, um, juice or whatever and the time taken for the pH to get back to the resting pH from the acidic pH will be 20 minutes to 1 hour. Okay, and like I told you earlier, we were talking about remineralization and demineralization. So initial caries are chalky white in appearance and when you are uh, dehydrated or when you blow, like when you can blow, use the syringe to blow it and blow dry it, what you will see is it will become chalky whitish in appearance, have a very dehydrated appearance. Okay, that's the appearance. Uh, also, you should remember that is the appearance when you over dry or when you dehydrate the tooth completely, it will appear chalky white. So, uh, the clinical relevance of that is when you, uh, for shade matching, for shade guides, when you're checking your uh, shades, you know, you, ha you never over, hy over hydrate the tooth. You have to check it in a moist environment. If you over, over dehydrate the tooth or if you dehydrate the tooth completely, then it becomes a chalky white and that will not be the shade of the tooth. So when you check the shade of the tooth, you check it in a moist environment. All this is I think given in mountain hue. So yeah. Next when we go, um, so we this is all that is very, um, uh, all the points about the enamel that you have to know. Next we are moving on to the de uh, uh, dentine but before that let's cover an important area which is your dentino enamel junction. Okay, DEJ. Now the DEJ, uh, the clinical uh, relevance of the DEJ is that the DEJ is very very highly sensitive area. Okay, DEJ is the high most sensitive area. Like when an operator is cutting cutting the tooth, I think you probably would have come across a situation when you reach the DEJ, the patient cannot bear the sensitivity at all. But once you pass the DEJ, then he kind of he still you know obviously dentine and sensitivity go hand in hand. But the DJ is the most sensitive area. That is because of the configuration of your dentinal tubules in this area. But yeah, so the configuration of the dentinal tubules in this area is what makes it a highly sensitive area. Okay. Coming to the dentine, dentine has organic and inorganic. Your enamel is mostly inorganic, dentine both equally composed. And dentine is not brittle like your enamel. Dentine is very resilient. And uh, main structures that you can find in your dentine is your dentinal tubules. Okay, so the important questions that you get about the tubules from the ABC will be one is your hydrodynamic theory. Okay, you have the hydrodynamic theory where you have the fluid which moves in and out of your dentine. So that's when, uh, especially when you're using, like if your the dentine is exposed and you're using the air syringe, when you use the air syringe, there is your fluid moving in and out of the tubules. So that time you will feel high sensitivity. So basically dentine sensitivity is explained by your hydrodynamic theory. This is because of the fluid inside moving in and out. That's the reason for that sensitivity. Now coming to your width of the uh, tubules. So um, there is a picture in your notes. 
I think you guys would have seen the picture. Did you guys find time to open the notes at all? Okay, good. Uh, it's, there's one picture where you can see that as the dentinal tubules um, come towards your enamel, that is from the pulp to the enamel, the tubules are narrow. Okay. Uh, or rather, the tubules are like smaller. And as the tubules keep coming closer to the pulp area, yeah, yeah, they are, the lumen is wider. Okay. The lumen is wider. So that the, another reason uh, for that is the width of your peritubular. That also I think is there in the picture. The peritubular dentin which surrounds the tubules will be more towards the enamel and the DJ rather than near the pulp. So because that is very small near the pulp, you have it. Um, so yeah, as you near the pulp, you find it thinner and also the number of tubules near, where, where is the number of tubules more? Is it more near the DJ or is it more near the pulp? Pulp. Actually, it's more near the pulp. Yeah, okay. I think that's also given in your notes. So you can just go through that as well. Next, as we uh, move on. So you need, you need to know the width of the peritubular, all this is given in detail in your notes, the intertubular dentine, the peritubular dentine, how it, uh, the number of tubules, how it varies near the pulp and how it is near the DJ and uh, all those things are given. So you can go through that in detail. There are a couple of MCQs on that also. Next we move on to uh, the different kind of abuse that the tooth is exposed to. You have attrition, you have abrasion, abfraction, erosion, decay. Okay, now how is attrition caused? Attrition, yeah, aging mainly because of uh, excessive, what to say, uh, interocclusal pressure, bruxism, all those things, yeah, to, uh, excessive ma masticatory forces, all these things are caused to, uh, to air attrition. Coming to abrasion, what is the main cause of abrasion, cervical abrasion? Yeah. Yeah, excessive, yeah, excessive uh, brushing pressure, yes. Okay, so that is your cervical abrasion. So what happens is because of the excessive uh, pressure from the brush, you have gingival recession and then your cementum gets exposed and you know cementum is more vulnerable. It's not as strong as your enamel so it wears off faster and then you get your cervical abrasion. Mm, then yeah. Okay guys just mute your mics. I think one, I don't know, one of your mics, it's, I can hear my own voice. Yeah, okay. Cool. Um, now coming to abfraction. Up, if you guys have any doubts in between, definitely you can turn it on. Uh, if you uh, like now we're coming to abfraction, abfraction is because of your flexure of the tooth. Okay, the tooth flex, there's any kind of uh, uh, flexion in the tooth and because the enamel is not very uh, resilient like your dentine and it is brittle, you have abfraction which takes place. Okay, uh, mainly questions from ADC will be from attrition, abrasion and erosion. Erosion is be mainly because of your, uh, what to say, conditions like GERD, gastroesophageal reflux disorder, so, or dysfunction, so there you have your uh, acids which you, which are, you know, brought back into the oral cavity and because of that, the tooth gets worn off, okay, that is another thing and also conditions where, and if you have, a person is exposed to, like has a lot of acidic beverages and too much acidic food, then you can find erosion in such cases. Okay, next moving on, we are going to talk about caries, which is very uh, important from operative point of view. So for caries to occur, what all do we need? What are the different factors that are that play a role in caries? Carbohydrates, okay, so what is the carbohydrate? It would be the substrate. Yeah, it would be the substrate. Uh, you guys would have heard there's a triad, right? The uh, caries triad, I think it's called the caries triad. So you need a substrate, which is the carbohydrates or anything that is sticky. Okay, so that is what, uh, yeah, that is a factor. What else? 
what acts on these carbohydrates or what acts on the substrate bacteria yes bacteria acts on the thing and uh, what is this substrate stuck on to the tooth what is the tooth it will be the host 